Google beats OpenAI to a full release of their voice mode artificial intelligence. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the interesting and unexpected twists for industry observers is just how much Google has, for the last couple of years, found themselves behind in an AI race they seemed best positioned to be the leader of. Startups like OpenAI and Anthropic command much more of the attention, and even big tech competitors like Microsoft have made major strides against the Google brand in ways that just wouldn't have seemed likely a couple of years ago. There's been a lot of discussion recently on exactly why that is. In a talk at Stanford that was just posted and has been getting lots of traction on Twitter, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt argued that part of the reason was that they had prioritized work-life balance over winning. But on the Y Combinator podcast, Gmail creator Paul Buchheit gave a different answer. According to Business Insider, Paul thinks that Google may have lost its way when it reorganized under Alphabet in 2015. The founder stepped back and CEO Sundar Pichai took the helm. That's when its focus shifted to preserving its monopoly over search. Said Buchheit, they have, you know, this goldmine, like search is just so valuable. AI is an inherently disruptive technology. And this gets at one of the core business model challenges for Google when it comes to AI. As we've talked about extensively on this show, the format of search seems to be changing. Whereas previously, the dominant mode of search was just you clicking on links that seemed like they might answer the question for you, which of course allows a company like Google to serve ads for links that might be good. If that shifts to just answering people's questions directly, which is what chatbots do, and which is of course where all of the emphasis on the new UI UX of search from companies like Perplexity is, That means they don't have the same sort of incentive to click on ads. Continued Bouquet, a search company has an inherent tension between profitability and giving the right answers because there's always a temptation that if you make your results worse, people will actually click on more ads. Anyways, this has been the sort of background noise of the conversation. Now, of course, a lot of our conversation over the past week has been rumors and innuendo surrounding a potential new model from OpenAI. And part of the reason that people suspected that it was happening right then and that OpenAI seemed to be leaning into it was that we knew there was a big Google event coming up where they anticipated having some announcements. The event was called Made by Google and was bigger than similar non-IO events had been in the past. There was a huge emphasis on the integration of AI into mobile phones, clearly giving a picture of where the form factor of artificial intelligence is going, at least if these big tech companies truly have a sense of the future. While the event was nominally a lot about Google Pixel 9, and there were tech specs, and a pitch to things like how much more bright the display was, how thin the foldable phone was, really a lot of the story was around artificial intelligence and AI features. Alongside the event, Google published 14 new things you can do with Pixel thanks to AI. And these things were spread across the Pixel Phone, Pixel Watch 3, and Pixel Buds Pro 2. Gemini has been integrated to a, quote, whole new level of AI assistance. Android users can now activate Gemini by just pressing the power button. There are photo editing tools. One is called Add Me, which is literally a way to add yourself into photos that you took. There is a new integrated image generation app, Pixel Studio. They call it a first-of-its-kind image generator powered by an on-device diffusion model running on Tensor G4 and our Imogen 3 text-to-image model in the cloud. This is basically their way of quickly and easily integrating AI imagery into other communications channels like messages. There's a feature for us in Veteran Screenshotters called Pixel Screenshots that basically allows you to describe something about a screenshot to go find it more easily. As we discussed recently, Google also seems to be integrating features that relate to tracking big details of key meetings that's being integrated into Google Meet and Google Workspace, potentially disrupting a set of AI startups like Fireflies and Otter. And now they have a similar feature coming for phone calls directly called Call Notes. Call Notes saves a private summary of any conversation and then can abstract key details, such as an appointment time, an important address, or a phone number to call back. Call Notes, they say, is fully on device and everyone on the call gets notified if the feature is activated. Said Rick Osterloh, Google's Senior Vice President of Devices and Services, we are fully in the Gemini era. Analysts were initially impressed as well. I've been to a lot of Google events, and not only was this one of the most elaborate, it was one of the most complete. Still, the big announcement, for sure, was the full launch of Gemini Live. This is the true competitor to OpenAI's advanced voice mode. This was the reason that OpenAI scheduled that event in advance of Google I.O. in order to be able to announce advanced voice mode in advance of Google announcing Gemini Live. And yet now, a couple months later, Google seems to be having the last laugh. While OpenAI has now slowly been rolling out advanced voice mode to select plus users, it's still only a tiny portion of people who have it. For example, I've been a paid subscriber for two years and have a daily AI podcast as well as an AI startup where we teach people how to use new tools. And OpenAI has not yet blessed me with advanced voice mode. Gemini Live, Google says, is a new way to have more conversations with Gemini. It's good for brainstorming ideas, you can interrupt it to ask questions, and you can pause a chat and come back to it. The framing for them is that Gemini Live truly turns the phone into an AI assistant. They write, 
For years, we've relied on digital assistants to set timers, play music, or control our smart homes. This technology has made it easier to get things done and save valuable minutes each day. Now, with generative AI, we can provide a whole new type of help for complex tasks that can save you hours. And in many ways, although people are making the comparison to OpenAI and their advanced voice mode, it seems pretty clear to me that the more direct competitor is Apple Intelligence. Just listen to how they describe the utility of Live. They write, Gemini can help with tasks big and small by integrating with all the Google apps and tools you use today. And unlike other assistants, it does so without having to jump between apps and services. We're launching new extensions in the coming weeks, including Keep, Tasks, Utilities, and expanded features on YouTube Music. Let's say you're hosting a dinner party. Have Gemini dig out the lasagna recipe Jenny sent you in your Gmail, ask it to add the ingredients to your shopping list and keep, and since your guests are your college friends, ask Gemini to make a playlist of songs that remind me of the late 90s. Without needing too many details, Gemini gets the gist of what you want and delivers. This is exactly the sort of day-to-day -day functionality that Apple intelligence is promising. What makes that interesting to me is actually not so much the competition. Sure, if I was putting on my investor hat and thinking about how AI features are going to impact the bottom line of Apple versus Google, there's a debate to be had there. But to me, what this suggests is that these features and these types of interactions are going to be totally ubiquitous. It's going to be very hard for anyone to have a leg up on AI for very long, but companies also aren't going to be able to ignore it. It's simply going to be table stakes features because these things are so useful that they're going to become ubiquitous incredibly quickly. So far, the initial reviews are fairly positive. Obviously, there hasn't been much time for people to get their hands on this, but broadly what I've seen is that it works a lot better than things like Siri, but it still has issues with hallucination. I'll do an update in a couple of days once people have had more of a chance to get their hands on it. Lastly, although Google was very self-conscious to focus on things that were actually available right now with this presentation, having heard, it seems, the critique of them always announcing things that are still fairly far away, they did show off some developments coming with Project Astra. Astra is another layer on the Gemini AI Assistant, that will allow Gemini to see the world through the phone's camera and, quote, act agentically on your behalf with reasoning, planning, and memory capabilities. In other words, this idea of AI agents, while still very nascent, is very clearly top of mind for these companies and coming down the pipeline. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.